Professor Mark Wiggins, Jenny Aiken, Steph Moran, um, students, colleagues, um, welcome to our event, the information session on the Doctor of Physiotherapy program. To start with, um, I'm Associate Professor Catherine Dean. I'm Head of the Department of Health Professions and Director of the Physiotherapy Program here at Macquarie. Um, I'd like to be begin our formalities by acknowledging the Derrick people who are the traditional custodians of the land in which Macquarie sits. I would like to also pay my respects to the elders, both past and present, of the Darug Nation and extend the respect to any other Indigenous guests present here this evening. We're very excited to see the great turnout to our information night, even if it did pose a little bit of challenges about how we're going to fit everybody in. Um, I thank you for coming. For those interested in our program, I thank you for coming to, to to our event to hear about our program and for the friends and relatives that have come accompanying prospective students I also thank you for coming to hear about our program. The purpose of tonight is really um, to provide some information about um, physiotherapy um, if you're considering that as a career option and then what our program here, the Doctor of Physiotherapy, offers and what advantages there are in actually studying here to become a physiotherapist. Uh, and for the prospective students for this cohort, providing some information about actually how you go through the um, application process for admissions for our mid-year intake this year. I'd now like to call um, Associate Professor Mark Wiggins, who's the Associate Dean of Research in the Faculty of Human Sciences, to talk about um, the university's plans for health and medicine and where physiotherapy fits. Um, Mark has been um, an amazing supporter of physiotherapy in helping the staff transition their research from their previous institution to here at Macquarie. And as a testament to his help, um, the current academic staff all secured some internal funding for their research um, within their first year of, of working here. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Kath. And uh, welcome to Macquarie University, everyone. Um, you've all done a tour and you can see the amazing facilities that have been developed here. But just having a, having a look at that video, um, the key aspect, I think, of what we do here is this link between teaching and research. Our motto at Macquarie University is, and gladly teach. We love to teach, and that's so important. Our researchers think of you when they're doing research. These facilities are for our students. Just to show you the development um, of our faculty, so, um, I'm representing our Dean tonight, Janet Greeley, who's uh, overseas at the moment. But she is the, the Dean of a, a faculty which focuses very much on the, the human, on understanding the human, the development of the human in a, in a number of different ways. And I'll show you how this works uh, a little bit later on. But it incorporates uh, a number of aspects, including our Advan Australian School of Advanced Medicine, which is associated with the hospital. So you've seen the hospital next door. And beyond that, there's a large building, and that's uh, the Australian School of Advanced Medicine. That's only quite new, about five, six years old now. Um, the Department of Health Professions is only two years old um, and physiotherapy, this is obviously a very new facility. What it testifies to is the fact that Macquarie University is absolutely determined to make its mark in the health professions and human sciences and it's investing heavily in this process but doing it from the perspective of integrating research and teaching and making sure to get the best possible education uh, that we can, we can provide. The other nice thing about our, our faculty, um, I'm actually originally from the Department of Wayne, from the, still from the Department of Psychology. Uh, we also have a Department of Cognitive Science, which is closely aligned with psychology, uh, linguistics, early childhood and education. And this sort of forms a nice sort of four aspects uh, to the way in which our faculty works. And it's really, I think the, the best part about our faculty is the bit in the middle. And that is where we all work together, where the physiotherapists work with the psychologists, the cognitive science work with the psychologists, we all engage with the education people. Uh, I know there's a project at the moment, for example, where physios are working with mental health. Uh, we have a, a mental health, uh, a very large mental health program, e-mental health, e-health program. 
And so it's this integration, this opportunity not just to experience physiotherapy, to, do, to, to look at physiotherapy in its, all of its different forms, working with other clinicians, both in the hospital but also in our uh, other facilities. So the four sort of areas that we focus on are, are health, obviously, is a big area. Um, the language issue, and this is very much focusing on disorders and, and why children can't develop speech or, or uh, have speech problems, reading problems. Uh, we focus on the mind, the nature of the mind, and then we focus on education. You can see they all come together to provide this really integrated program. So our health programs um, within that, and if we draw out those, we have advanced medicine, of course, advanced surgery. Notice the notion of advanced. What we're trying to do is we're trying to pitch ourselves a little bit beyond the status quo. We're looking for excellence. We're looking to put people a bit ahead of their game. So audiology, clinical neuropsychology, uh, clinical psychology, physio, of course, and speech pathology. And there's that opportunity to work with all of these different clinicians as part of this process. As if we haven't invested enough in terms of the new hospital advanced uh, medicine, we have our new library, which is a state-of-the-art library. If you haven't been to our library, you should go. Uh, people actually come to Macquarie just to visit our library. It's run with robots. So basically what happens if you want a book, you put in the computer that you want a book, and a robot down below goes and gets a stack of books, which you, within which is that book that you want, and brings it up to you. It's state-of-the-art. Um, but we also have this, this building on the top right hand side there which is our very, very new Australian Hearing Hub. Um, it was only opened uh, a month ago and it is incredible. And the reason why I say it's incredible is because I've got one of my programs in there as well and the resources, the, the, the facilities are like this, it's just incredible. The, the combination of the Australian Hearing Hub, uh, our resources here in physiotherapy, the, uh, the, the hospital, is, it's all linked through electronics. So one of the great aspects that, that we're working on now is electronic medical records. So you can actually track patients coming from the hospital through physio in recovery through to mental health issues, there are mental health issues, and the whole idea is to bring this all together to have the person, the client, the, the patient as the centre of everything we do. That's absolutely essential. That holistic approach to rehabilitation and medicine is absolutely incredible. Uh, and I think it's something that's going to make Macquarie very different for the future. So that's it for me. Um, welcome again. Uh, it's lovely to see so many people here. I know we've all enjoyed the tours. Uh, I love coming down here as well. And uh, I'll join you for supper afterwards if any questions you have for me. Over to you, Kat. Thanks. I just lost my mic. <laughs> Okay, I was just now going to give a brief overview of um, the Doctor of Physiotherapy program that we offer here. And I'm trying not to repeat what's in the, um, the video too much. Um, the pathway to the Doctor of Physiotherapy program, because it's a postgraduate degree, is doing, a rele doing an undergraduate degree with some relevant uh, prerequisite knowledge requirements then the post three year postgraduate degree. And it is an entry level program, it's to become a physiotherapist. Uh, um, the award is a doctor of physiotherapist, the physiotherapy, but it's actually a, a level nine master's extended if you look at the Australian qualifications framework. So it's actually a master's level course. Um, and the requirements of a master's extended is a three year duration co course. We're starting a little bit differently. Uh, our intake's mid-year um, and we're aiming for an enrolment task of 60 domestic students and up to 10% international. There are, there are now 17 universities offering physiotherapy around Australia. And so I think there are six clear reasons why you should come here to Macquarie. <laughs> And these are the ones outlined on the slides. And some of them were already in our video um, that Mark actually spoke to. The first reason I think you should come is it's a postgraduate program. And as Tamar and Mark talked about on the video, it does align ourselves with the international qualifications. Um, I also think a postgraduate program just enriches um, the profession because you have people coming in maybe from a career change, a broader range of skills and experiences which en enriches our profession of physiotherapy. 
I think the second reason why you should come here to Macquarie is actually the staff. Um, we have recruited exceptional staff to our program and as Mark highlighted in the video, we are experienced educators and researchers. Um, Mark and Julia and myself together have published over 150 publications and Mark, Julia and myself and Ange um, collectively have spent 50 years in physiotherapy <laughs> education. We were child prodigies or we did start in the womb, I'm not quite sure. Um, a lot of it was together, that's the other thing, as a team, Julia, Mark and myself and Ange have worked together for a long period of time and we're committed to the vision of the program here at, at Macquarie. We're very excited to um, have Dr. Ka Catherine Mills joining us um, on the 1st of July. Uh, she's a, a recent graduate from, um, uh, she's a graduate from Newcastle University who completed her PhD University of Queensland, but uh, did her, her actual post her doctoral studies at the Institute of Sport in Canberra. And she's currently doing a postdoc in Alberta, Canada. And she's back to join us in second semester. So we're very excited for Kate to join us. And relative to where she is in her career, she's an exceptional researcher and, and teacher. We're also um, privileged to have uh, Professor Chris Marr as an adjunct professor. He's a, an ARC Future Fellow and Senior uh, honorary NHMRC Senior Research Fellow. He's the head of the Musculoskeletal Division of the George Institute for Global Health. And he collaborates very closely with Mark and Julia on research. In addition to our full-time staff, we have exceedingly experienced clinicians and specialists who, who give guest lectures and tutorials. So, and some of our staff are here tonight. So Taryn, Taryn Jones and Louise Greeny are here, um, who, who undertake a lot of our tutorials as well. And then we're wonderfully supported by our professional staff. So Lini Gompez, which some of you will know, is our department administrative officer. We also have a number of research and other administrative assistants. But also, it's not just us. We've had enormous faculty support in developing physiotherapy. Um, Judy Laurie's here from the Dean's office. But across the board, across the university, there's been amazing support in developing physiotherapy. Um, the third reason, and perhaps the most important reason, is I think the innovative and extended curriculum we offer. We are the first extended, um, master's extended program in New South Wales. The only other comparable program is the University of Melbourne, um, and Bond University is the other doctor of physiotherapy program in the country. I think it's the uh, innovative extended curriculum that we offer. Um, we have aligned it to all those uh, requirements, so the Australian Physiotherapy Standards, uh, the postgraduate Macquarie capabilities, um, and the what's the requirement from the Australian Qualifications Framework about what makes a Master's Extended Program. I think the other strength of our curriculum is our integrated and extensive clinical education program. We offer 150 days of clinical training and it starts from the beginning. We have some innovative clinical programs and, um, and we have to commend Angela Stark who's our clinical coordinator for, for being able to implement our vision. We have a health and wellbeing collaboration where there's volunteers from the community who are happy to work with our students. Um, and that, that program has been quite challenging to run logistically and Angela has done a brilliant job at, at delivering that part of the program. Um, we also uh, attracted um, over half a million dollars of funding from Health Workforce Australia to actually establish and build our clinical partnerships, which has actually main, meant that we've actually been able to purchase equipment and um, in order to actually promote clinical education within the clinical setting. So when our students go out to do their block placements in July, um, with them will go some iPads um, and other equipments for the for the the clinical sites to use to promote student learning. Uh, the other thing that makes our program different and, and what is probably unique to the Doctor of Physiotherapy programs is the fact that we, have, we will be doing advanced physiotherapy practice, including um, units of study in business management and law, um, and we've organised for the Faculty of Business and Economics to teach that unit of study. We'll be doing leadership policy and advocacy work, and we also have um, a significant research component. So like the, what um, Mark was talking about earlier, that it's important to have teaching and research embedded together, that's our expectation of our students at the postgraduate level as well. 
Um, this is kind of the structure of our program, um, just in the six key semesters, uh, rather than calling our semesters one to six, because we start in the second semester, it is very confusing. So we have semester A, B, C, D, E and F. And you can see how we build over time um, the, the physiotherapy skills. So in the first semester, we really look at foundation skills. The second semester, which our first cohort's in at the moment, is looking at managing common uh, conditions. Then they do a whole lot of placement, so, so that's developing as a clinician. And then they'll come back and do some more work managing more complex conditions. And then that the second last semester is really looking at extending knowledge of future leaders. So that's where the advanced physiotherapy skills are taught, as well as the business management and law and the leadership policy and advocacy, as well as some research training. And then that last semester is really a combined clinical semester and research semester. The other reason why I think you, you should choose us is our state-of-the-art um, purpose-built new facilities and equipment. And we do have fabulous IT, even if we have the minor hiccup now and then. Um, and it's probably be an operator error, <laughs> if the truth be known. <laughs> um, I think what makes our facility really good is that we are in the medical precinct. We are, the hospital is the building beside us and then across from the hospital is the clinic. So that opportunity for inter integration with the Australian School of Advanced Medicine um, is very strong. We have these three specialist teaching rooms. So this is normally a clinic um, with, with beds for a tutorial group, one between two. We have <coughs> the up-down facilities of the beds. Um, and then we have the rehab gym, which is the room this way, and the uh, multi-purpose kind of gym slash clinic room which is the other one there. Behind us where the clinic is kind of set up temporarily will be our research facility and that will be completed in the next uh, six months or so. And so the stage two is, is the development of our research laboratory as well as an extension of our office space and facilities. The fifth reason and, and another really good reason for, for coming to Macquarie is the small cohort and the mid-year start means a mid-year completion. With the plethora of physiotherapy programs offered across Australia, there's only one other university that offers a mid-year intake and that is Canberra. A mid-year intake of a three-year degree means a mid-year finish. So there'll be less new graduates at the same time trying to compete for the jobs. So I do think that you will get, there'll be an enhanced job prospects by actually finishing mid-year. The other advantage of a mid-year intake was if your um, undergraduate degree didn't meet the prerequisite knowledge requirements, it gives you an opportunity to, to study those units as a miscellaneous student in the first half of the year and actually start mid-year. The sixth reason is really the synergies with the other Macquarie Health programs and services here. Um, the university hospital and the clinics is a place where our students actually get to study. All our students uh, have been or will go into the, the hospital to do some clinical work. Over half of them will do a five week block placement in the hospital. Uh, the Australian School of Advanced Medicine has amazing wet lab anatomy facilities which we intend to use in semester D and E of our program. It also has a simulation unit uh, which um, students will actually be using in, in week 13 of this semester uh, and where it has a simulation uh, operating theatre that we're going to run as an ICU, so practice before the, student, before the students actually go out on clinical. Um, there's wonderful opportunities in the hearing hub with the speech and psychology clinic. So students have been doing as part of their Hawk program, some observations in those clinics. So we get an interprofessional education as well. The Macquarie University Sports and Aquatic Centre is an amazing facility. So not only will you stay fit, but we've actually run some of our classes down in the gym. So we had simulated hydrotherapy in first semester down in the, the pools of the, of the Muzak Centre, I'm not, I'm not sure how cold the water was, <laughs> but cold. 
Um, but also if we're doing fitness training, there's a really um, good interaction with the, the Sports and Aquatic Centre um, to help our program out. Um, so if we want to do a whole lot of fitness training, then we can go and take a tutorial group down to those facilities and make use of their amazing fitness equipment that they've got down there. Also within the faculty here in Human Sciences, we have a special school which um, caters for children with disability and we also have childcare centres and we see them as the opportunity to provide some clinical experience for students in, in working with children over time and that's planned to be integrated into our semester D as well. So I think there are six clear reasons why you should choose Macquarie if you want to become a physiotherapist. Um, and, and we'd welcome applications. I just want to talk a little bit about logistics. Um, physiotherapy is a high contact course compared to a number of other postgraduate programs. So in year one, the classes on campus here are kind of scheduled 16 to 18 hours a week and they're timetabled across three days. But there is an expectation because you're doing integrated clinical that you need to be available at other times during the week. So it is a high contact um, course and that when clinical placements start, the block placements start in semester C, you need to really be available to work full time for 15 weeks of the year in a 20 week period. So it is a high commitment. You do need to think about your, your work and, and recreation plans if you're going to enrol in our program. Um, we are, we do have fees on our domestic placements, although we do have a limited number of the Commonwealth supported places or the HEX places. The faculty has made a decision to allocate the limited Commonwealth supported places on, the, on a 50-50 basis from, on an equity basis and the equity criteria at the moment is Indigenous students and rurally, rural or remote, regionally or remote students and, um, and the other 50% will go to merit. Um, our current domestic fees are just over $27,500 per year. Uh, we are eligible for the student income support schemes through Centrelink and international student fees are around 36,000 currently. So this is our admission criteria if you are interested. Really you need to have completed an undergraduate degree with a grade point average of 2.5 out of four. Um, some grade point averages are calculated at a, at a seven. Um, it, it is just a conversion to get it out of four. Um, Basically, it's usually around um, a, a credit or better average. Students have to also meet the prerequisite prerequis knowledge criteria, which is you need to have covered at least one unit of human anatomy covering both system and musculoskeletal an anatomy, a unit of physiology, which again covers cell and system, a unit of psychology, and a unit in research methods. And we also, if English is not your first language or you haven't studied any, we have a language criteria of the IELTS test being um, no, a seven and no component being less than a seven. And then we have some desirable prerequisite knowledge criteria, which are just used if we have um, students on um, equal um, GPAs and equal everything else, how we might separate students. The application process, our applications are currently open. Um, it's a two-step process. You need to apply through uh, UAC, so the University's Admission Centre, um, and there's the website link there. You just click on postgraduate and you'll find physiotherapy at Macquarie. You also have to submit to us directly the supplementary form, which details your, um, your prerequisite knowledge um, criteria and if you are interested in the CSP equity component, so if you're an Indigenous student or regionally or rurally um, or remotely disadvantaged, um, you need to apply directly to us, fill out the application form for that. If you're looking for CSP based on merit, that will happen automatically. Uh, just some important dates, what our plan is. UAC opened on the 10th of April. 
um, and we have been taking applications and we're intending to close on the 22nd of May. Um, then we will process the applications and start to make offers. UAC only off, uh, releases offers um, once a week on a Wednesday. So we're, we're anticipating our first batch of offers will be the 5th of June. We then would hope that people will accept or, or make clear whether they're going to take up their offer. And then uh, we'll look at offering second round offers if there are spaces left. Um, once our cohort has kind of been defined, we'll send um, information out in early July, an information package out to students which will outline how you enrol. Um, but basically the university enrolment process opens mid-July. Um, there's orientation activities happening um, in the week before semester starts and classes for the university start on the 29th of July. So that's just a time frame. If you're wanting to find more information, um, you can look up our website. Uh, we're, we're also on the course finder page of the university website. We have a Facebook um, page and we also have a generic um, physiotherapy email. Okay, all right. I'd now like to um, introduce Jenny Aiken. Jenny is the uh, General Manager of uh, Health Networks Australia. Uh, she oversees physiotherapy clinics and other allied health businesses across three states. She's a sports physiotherapist who has spent the majority of her career in private practice and is passionate about being able to provide quality physiotherapy services to the community as a whole. She's currently um, a key member of our advisory board um, for our program here. Uh, she's the chair of the Central Sydney Allied Health Network and is a member of the Australian Physiotherapy Association's National Advisory Committee. And Health Networks Australia, which is the company that Jenny works for, is one of the clinical partners here at Macquarie for our program. Thanks, Jenny. Thank you. Thanks, Kath, for the introduction and welcome to you all. Um, you're obviously here with the prospect of undertaking a physiotherapy career, which can be an exciting time, but also a time where you're obviously making a big commitment, particularly financially, and it's important that you make the right decision and you choose the right course. When I went through uni, which was actually with Kath many years ago, there were only five physio courses in Australia and only one in New South Wales, so our choice was pretty easy. But these days, there's undergraduate courses, postgraduate masters, extended masters, and also many universities to choose from. So it's a much harder decision. The reason I'm here tonight is because I feel strongly that Macquarie, under the leadership of Kath Dean, have got the balance just right and have developed a truly progressive course whose graduates will be sought after by employers and who will be well equipped to work in the current healthcare environment. The physiotherapy course at Macquarie, as has been mentioned, was, it has been developed with an advisory board that comprises of industry experts from a range of areas within the healthcare system. And they're there to ensure that the content of the course was relevant to modern day physiotherapy. I sit on this board of advisors and I've seen firsthand the university's commitment to creating a comprehensive, relevant and truly progressive course. During my career as a private practitioner and now as a general manager, I've overseen more than a dozen physiotherapy practices, occupational health businesses, and also a business that provided allied health services to aged care facilities across Australia. At any one time, there's been under over 150 physiotherapists um, employed in these businesses. So I've seen firsthand what, it, what makes a great physiotherapist and what attributes new graduates should possess and what the current healthcare needs are. In the past, I believe with other courses, there's been an absence of business, management and leadership training within the physiotherapy degrees. And this has become obvious when the graduates come to work in our practices. Whilst they have the necessary clinical skills, they often lack the understanding of business, of the, what the business of physiotherapy is and what makes a successful physiotherapist in the real world. So I believe that Macquarie University with its Doctor of Physiotherapy has addressed this imbalance through their association with their business unit 
And for this reason, graduates will have an edge over other graduates. I think they will adapt more readily to a range of positions within the healthcare system and will become leaders of our profession in the future and advocates for healthcare reform. So we currently find ourselves in a changing world that is experiencing a whole range of lifestyle diseases, from diabetes to obesity to heart disease. There's also an ageing population, and which is going to require significant numbers of health professionals to care for them. Macquarie University's program is acutely aware of these emerging health of these emerging healthcare trends, and have increased and the increased need for prevention and management of these lifestyle issues. Physiotherapists, as Kath has mentioned, will be in great demand, but more importantly, the Macquarie graduates will be extremely well placed to manage these emerging healthcare trends as the program has been specifically designed to address them. So once again, I think this is an example of how the Doctor of Physiotherapy at Macquarie will prepare you for an exciting future in healthcare because it really is acknowledging what's happening at the moment, what's going to happen in the future and tailoring a course to meet those needs, not just doing what they have done for the last 10 or 20 years. I also think that being an extended three-year masters instead of a two-year masters facilitates a comprehensive physiotherapy program and provides sufficient time to explore all aspects of physiotherapy across a lifespan. It also gives them access to more clinical education across a wider variety of settings that are more relevant to today's healthcare needs. And they've certainly put a lot of effort into making the clinical education very varied and, um, and giving as much exposure to different areas as possible. Health Networks Australia, which is the company that I'm associated with, has partnered with Macquarie University to guarantee a significant number of placements within our private practices and have made a commitment to give students exposure to sports coverage with elite sporting teams, something that we could have only dreamed about when I was a student. Finally, I've been nothing but impressed by the facilities at Macquarie, which you can see tonight, and their commitment to their allied health program is truly commendable. First grade, purpose-built facilities with links to medical practitioners and a hospital can only enhance the student experience. As Kath has mentioned, I believe graduating mid-year will mean that you will not be competing with other university graduates for employment. There's often a glut of physiotherapists at the beginning of the year, but it's often quite difficult to employ physiotherapists midway through the year. So I think being available for employment at that time will mean that you might secure a job more quickly. So I wish you the very best with your decision, and I'm confident that if you choose Macquarie's Doctor of Physiotherapy, you will receive an excellent education and be well prepared for a career as a physiotherapist. I've never regretted becoming a physiotherapist and I've thoroughly enjoyed its intellectual challenges, the gratification of helping people in need and the flexibility and diversity that the profession offers and I'm sure that you will too. So thank you. Okay, thank you Jenny. Um, I'd like to um, now call on Stephanie Moran, who's one of our students to give a student perspective. Um, Steph is one of um, five student representatives that we have from our first cohort, and the student representatives meet frequently with the staff to give us feedback and input into how um, we should change the program or get feedback about how it's going. Um, Steph's main role as a student representative is to liaise with, the, with the, our professional association, so with the Australian Physiotherapy Association. Um, Steph's previous degree was uh, a commerce degree, so she's an example of someone who actually has, has taken on a career change. So over to Steph and you probably recognise her from the video. <laughs> well, great to see so many faces. Um, so can I just get a sort of show of hands, how many people would, would this be a career, possible career change? Okay, so there's a few of you. Okay, I know how you feel. Um, it is a really, really big decision um, and driving here tonight I was trying to have a think about what were the sort of questions I had when I was in your position last year 
Um, feels like a lot longer ago, actually, because we've sort of learnt so much in that period of time. But um, the key, qu key questions I had um, in your position were, will this be a practical degree in the sense, will I feel confident to actually practice when I graduate? And I can only sort of comment on how I feel now, one year in. Um, there's a lot I still have to learn. Um, but a year in, I, I, I can say I do feel a lot more confident than I did on that sort of first day. Uh, I didn't know sort of um, what I was getting myself into there. Um, I have had the opportunity, I suppose, to work with people who are coming from all sorts of different backgrounds. And that's, that's a good thing, I think. Uh, you don't sort of go into a classroom um, to work with people who've done the same degree. You'll experience, you know, one day working next to a fully fledged chiropractor, the next day you might be working alongside a PE teacher. Um, so there are people who've come from various different backgrounds. And you'll find that each of those degrees obviously prepare you slightly differently for a course like this. Your PE teachers are fantastic at coaching and teaching um, people how to, you know, l learn to walk again. Whereas your chiropractor obviously has a range of clinical expertise that he, he's willing to share. Um, so regardless of where, you've, where you're coming from or, or what your background is, don't, don't be afraid. Um, you will find your feet and your, the skills that you've acquired in your undergraduate degree will be utilised. Uh, in terms of, um, I was looking for, I guess, a more mature course. Uh, I'd, I've done undergraduate, two undergraduate degrees now, or one and a half, I suppose. Uh, and what was missing, I suppose, was that sort of mature approach. The reality is a lot of us have to work and have a life and that we have other things going on. And I feel that the environment here has been very, very supportive to enable you to do that and to study. Uh, in terms of the level of the education, it's not about, I was saying to someone on the tour tonight, I don't think we've sat down at the tables and ha had a class just at the tables ever. Um, it's, it, we're constantly getting up, actually putting our skills into practice. The clinical um, experience that you get in the sort of first five weeks of the course is fantastic. That I think the, it's referred to as the Hawk program. Um, so that involves being allocated a volunteer in the community. And for me, that was, that was really great because I was a little bit uncertain to get uncertain um, going into this. So to have that opportunity to get your hands kind of dirty in the first five weeks, really um, confirmed to me that I'd made the right decision. And throughout the course up until this point, that's, uh, that confirmation has, has followed and, and become much stronger. We've, we've had opportunities to go and work, uh, or not work, observe, uh, in, a range of clinical, in a range of clinical settings. And again, that's, that's great to see how it actually works in practice. Um, so yeah, being a practical course was a big, big selling point for me. And you can tell from these facilities um, that they're not just nice to look at, they're great to learn in. Um, we've got an amazing group of um, staff who, who I think unlike some potentially universities aren't just researchers and, and educators, they're actually really passionate clinicians as well and they're very willing to share their professional experience with us which has been, which has been great. So there's never a case study that they haven't seen or haven't experienced that, that, that they're not willing to talk to us about. Um, I've had a lot of questions tonight on the tour, I suppose, about whether you can have a life and can I work? And yes, you can. Um, the load is quite heavy and you do have to be committed to, to doing the course. Um, but if you're making the right decision, then you won't have any issues with doing that. Um, I have a job <laughs> and I work and I have a social life and I hang out with the McFizz kids as we're now known, um, which is our sort of student society. So there are lots of opportunities to socialise as well. Um, and I, th I think they were sort of the key, key questions, but happy to answer more questions one-on-one -on -one out in the, the break. But I would strongly recommend that you apply um, and, s and see what happens. But just, yeah, feel confident that you're, you're ready to go and it's a great course and it's a lot of fun. And that's, is that it? Yeah. Okay, back to Kath. Um, thanks, Steph. And 
there's lots of our students here today, um, tonight, and they're all happy to answer the question, people's questions. They are a tremendous first, first cohort. I don't think the staff could have hoped for a better group of students, and so we hope our second group is just as good. Um, so, yeah, so they're all in their uniform, and don't they look smart? <laughs> So feel free to ask them some questions. I'd now like to open it up actually to a question and answer session. Um, we're happy to, um, to take questions. To get uh, um, prior recognition of prior learning, it would need to be at the postgraduate level, but it needs to be in a, in a relevant area, so we'd have to be assessed. It's probably a little bit difficult because we have to meet the Australian standards to, to have those things, but we'd have to do an analysis of it. Uh, we, we could look at the transfer and it, my expectation would be there would be some recognition of prior learning, but I'd have to look at, we'd have to look at the, how it matches up. We're reasonably familiar with that program. <laughs> Well, there are four units of study, so really it's a semester of full-time study if you have none of them. Um, uh, you just need to make sure that you can actually um, cover both uh, system and cell anatomy within one unit of, of study. So theoretically you could do them within one semester. Um, no, no. No, in, there are units available at Macquarie that are offered that we can provide advice about units that you can do at Macquarie that would meet our prerequisite knowledge um, that probably need some individual consultation. Um, otherwise, um, sometimes people are only missing one unit of study, so a typical one that people are missing is often psychology. And really, you can do psychology in a lot of different places, like Open University and things like that as well. So there's lots of opportunity. We're not prescriptive about exactly where you do the, those prereqs. They just have to be covered, the content. It's roughly around, um, well, I can tell you historically, it's, so it was roughly um, uh, 25 to 30% of our places. It's something that's uh, negotiated by the university uh, with DUA, like with the government on a kind of annual basis. So um, historical data is probably the most accurate to go on. Um, Macquarie University has a specific language criterion. It depends whether, in which countries you previously had studied. Um, if you have any, the requirement for physiotherapy and uh, some of the other advanced health programs is uh, IELTS of seven with no component less than seven. So we'd have to look at what you'd done before and whether you meet, meet, whether your prior study qualifies that or not. Um, the, the language requirement is set as it is because of uh, future registration as a physiotherapist. There's quite a strong IELTS criteria that if you didn't complete your secondary education in a, a certain number of countries, you need to demonstrate an IELTS of seven with no component less than seven. Um, so we're just trying to ensure that anybody we take in has the language skills to ensure that they can register at the end of the course. Um, physiotherapy across the country, despite the proliferation of programs, is a highly competitive, um, highly competitive profession that all people will try to get into. It's a highly competitive in terms of programs. Um, you won't get in unless you meet our minimum criteria of 2.5 GPA out of four and, and those four prerequisite areas. But having that minimum criteria will not guarantee admission either. So, so you need that to stand a chance, but then it will, it's basically based on uh, GPA. No, we don't interview. So it's on the basis of um, your, uh, so UAC gives us the information that certifies that you've done an undergraduate degree and calculates the GPA for us. And then we do a, the supplementary form is where we check the prerequisite knowledge criteria and look at the desired knowledge criteria as well. Um, yeah, and that's how we 
that's how we make offers. Yes, yes. And international for international applicants into our program, Macquarie International calculate the DPA for us. So that part of it is already calculated for us. You can still apply, we can offer conditional admission. So basically we would count your GPA up to what's available at the time. And then there'd be, if you were competitive, you'd be made an offer, but it'd be a conditional offer demonstrating that you'd selective, uh, successfully completed the prerequisite area. And you have to have completed that before enrolment, but. Um, about accreditation, um, good question. Um, uh, accreditation of physiotherapy programs, the accrediting authority is the Australian Physiotherapy Council. Um, and with the national law, so with the Australian Health Practitioners Regulation a a Agency, in which a number of their health professions got national registration, of which physiotherapy is one of them, there's been a transition around accreditation. So in the past, no program could get full accreditation until it had completed a cohort of students and collected uh, employer data and uh, data of outcome, so um, employer feedback um, and student feedback of, of the quality of your, your graduates. So it's an outcomes-based system. Um, what would typically have happened before and what we started was an application for provisional accreditation. So the accrediting authority accredits the program, not the students, so it accredits the program. If you're an accredited program or a provisionally accredited program, you are, your graduates are eligible for registration. Because of the national law, the whole accreditation process is in actual flux. Um, and we are working with the Australian Physiotherapy Council to ensure that we meet the accreditation requirements. We are likely to hear about our accreditation status um, at the end of next year, so we'll have a site visit um, early next year, another application in September and a decision made by the end of the year. It is likely we will be approved with conditions um, because the conditions will be on until we can demonstrate the outcomes of our graduates. So we're in train, we've done all the work, we're working very closely with the Australian Physiotherapy Council and the university is very committed to meeting any conditions that are put on our accreditation. Yeah, your arts degree can be your bachelor's degree and then you just need to, to cover the four prerequisite knowledge areas. It will only be used if right at the bottom, right at the end of our, our um, offers um, to separate people who are on like GPA. <music> only if you're on exactly the same, getting close to our cutoff. Uh, we collect the information about desired criteria though because it actually helps with our, uh, our planning in terms of our education, how, how we pitch, the way we teach. To, so if we know a little bit about the background and what students have done, we know who, how to target certain areas. So yeah, the admission criteria is that GPA and those four knowledge things. The desired is just, you know, if people were on equal GPA and we had one spot left, we'd give it to the person with the desired Criteria. There is, but there, it's very complex and we use UX calculation of GPA. And the problem, and I think one of the difficulties for prospective students, regardless of their courses, is that GPA calculator seems to be a little bit of a black box. Um, and, and you can only kind of guesstimate what you think your GPA is. But by going through UAC, it's standardised across, they've calculated it for everyone. Um, I don't think they weight the years any differently. I think it's an overall mark divide. It's like your average mark. That's what I think they do. Now, 
uh, it's an individual project. Um, it's a requirement of an extended master's that our students demonstrate the ability to apply new knowledge or create new knowledge. Um, so there's, there's a number of su subjects starting from semester D that work towards the research component. So uh, you need to nominate your topic in semester D. In semester E, you flesh out a, a, a strong research proposal, get ethical clearance if you need it. And then in semester F, the final semester, you do a clinical placement and you conduct the research project. Um, we, when we talk about research, we, we're hoping to partner with our uh, our intention is to partner with our clinical partners on the research project. So they might be quality improvement um, projects, um, something that adds value to the to the um, to the clinical environment. So it might be a retrospective audit of. Um, a private practices uh, knee replacement records to try and see whether they what their outcomes are like or it could be an audit of the practice like are we is that practice um, implementing the current guidelines and things like that so we're trying to make them very relevant to work as a clinical um, physiotherapist <laughs>
It has to be a university level course. So we actually went to criteria last year, so 2.5 and the knowledge criteria got you in last year. We didn't quite fill our quota because we're a new program. Um, I anticipate it will be higher this year, but I don't know. Um, the message is if you are really keen to apply for this year, I'd get your application in early because our cutoff is the 22nd of May. Um, if, if we extend our cutoff, because we haven't been able to deliver all, we haven't got enough applicants that have met our criteria, we'll have a rolling cutoff. But the CSP allocation will be made on the basis of the applications received by the 22nd of May. Um, applications, because we're, because we're a second semester intake, in general, UAC open in April for the July, okay? So there is some talk with UAC that they will open up their second semester stuff at the beginning, at the end of the year, but we haven't had that confirmed. Um, we still wouldn't make offers until, you know, early June because, because of the CSP component that we have, we preference it based on the equity and the, and the merit. We have to wait to ensure that we're getting the top graduates to, to enter our program. Okay, if there's no more questions, I think it's time for a drink. <laughs> so thank you again. Um, I would really, I should have, I should have just thanked some people first. I'd really like to thank our speakers who spoke tonight and to thank our student representatives that, that took the tours. Um, they're an incredible bunch of students, so if you've got any questions, just don't hesitate to ask. There's also quite a number of staff here who are also most happy to answer questions. Thanks again.